from Uppsala, Sweden, and he's going to give his data on arrhythmias in athletes uh, in, in, uh, in this special uh, male cross skiers. Yeah. <coughs> Actually, this um, study complements the study by Knut Gieschild very much. It's um, a study among arrhythm of arrhythmias in the male long distance cross country skiers. And it's um, from Uppsala University and from the Karolinska Institute. Uh, we have a cover here. Um, long standing endurance training lead to physiolo physiological structural changes in the heart. And after cessation of training, these changes are largely, re largely reversed, but permanent myocardial fibrosis may develop. May develop. Smaller case control studies have suggested higher incidence of atrial fibrillation in endurance trained athletes, and um, we aim to investigate the risk of arrhythmias in a large cohort of endurance trained athletes. As markers of uh, endurance training intensity and dur duration, we used finishing time and number of completed races. And this was done in a cohort from the Swedish Vesa Loppet. The Vesa Loppet is a Swedish 90 kilometer cross country skiing event the first, first week of March and um, attracts around 15,000 participants. Uh, ranging from elite skiers to recreation, recreational skiers. The participants are, uh, compared to the normal population, very healthy. They have higher leisure time activity. They have lower frequency of smoking, lower frequency of obesity and fat consumption, and lower frequency of physical and mental illness. And what is also important to stress, they have reduced mortality with a standard mortality ratio of 0.48. The winning time is about four hours, which gives an uh, average um, uh, average speed of 22.5 kilometers per hour, which is very impressive. And we know there is a close relation, relation between finishing time and the participants' VO2 max. Our study sample was very large, with 47,000 men without cardiovascular disease uh, participating in the Vesa Lobbit. We used the national registries to get our um, our events uh, by personal uh, identification number, which every uh, every citizens in Sweden have. As you can see here, we have uh, uh, plot the the risk uh, uh, the incidence of having an arrhythmia by the numbers of races you see by more completed races you have a higher risk and uh, completing more than seven races you have uh, a significant larger reach this is unadjusted data and i will come to adjusted data afterwards for your the finishing time it seems like there is some kind of threshold um, so um, uh, finishing more than 240% of the winning time gives you a lower risk of having an arrhythmia. And this is all arrhythmias, uh, but is mainly driven by atrial fibrillation and uh, different kinds of bradyarrhythmias, where um, atrial fibrillation is the most frequent. We had our 881 cases among these young people Participating in the Vesa Lover, they had a mean age of 38.8 um, year. And after we adjusted for age, income, and uh, education, you can see by slower uh, finishing time, you have lower risk, and by increased number of races, you have a higher risk with a hassle ratio of 1.3. And for the finishing time, it's uh, around uh, 0. Uh, 0.75. Uh, the same picture is seen among atrial fibrillation and uh, different kind of bradyarrhythmias. 
We therefore conclude uh, there is uh, uh, a higher risk of arrhythmias among vessel opus participants with higher numbers of completed races with lower finishing time. This was uh, mainly driven by a higher risk of bratty arrhythmias and atrial fibrillation among the fastest cross-country skiers and those who had completed most races. We observed no associations with risk of other superventricular tachycardias or the more dangerous uh, ventricular tachycardias or cardiac arrest. The mechanisms to this finding is unknown, but we suggest that long-standing endurance training increases the amount of fibrosis in the myocardium, and the increased fibrosis may act as what is called an arrhythmia substrate, leading to a higher risk of arrhythmia. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions to f for need for clarification? Um, I have a question. How was bradycardia defined in an athlete? Because maybe different. Uh, how was how? bradycardia defined? Because uh, you uh, might accept it's, it's it's from the ICD diagnosis, and we excluded the most uh, uh, we excluded the uh, physiological ones like uh, AV block one and um, sinus bradycardia. So it's actually these. Um, arrhythmias which you can uh, have a pacemaker. Any questions? Oh, and a pacemaker could, could be actual. Uh, Ed Sussman with Met PhD. Um, can you um, give us some figures on the um, percentage that were atrial fibrillation and other um, arrhythmias? You said most were atrial fibrillations. Yeah. Was it 60 percent, 70 percent, or? Yeah. Um, there was 661 cases of atrial fibrillation and 120 of bradyrhythmias. Hi, I'm Lindy Vandenberg from Circulation. How would that compare to what your normal rate of um, arrhythmias would be in an equivalent age group? Excuse me, I didn't hear. How would you compare that rate of arrhythmias in an equivalent age group of people? Um, we don't have any data of uh, how it is, and, and uh, we are actually we are planning a study where we will compare with to, to the normal comp population, but we are not able to, to, to make any comparisons. Because I'm working that out, that's about 2%, is that right? Excuse me? About 2% of your participants. It was about, yeah, about 2%. I mean, that seems high to me. Yeah. It so is, it's quite worrying. It's, it could be worrying, but you know that um, physical activity has been proven, uh, proven for um, all, almost any other diseases as a beneficial so, so I believe strongly that you should continue in to, to do physical activity also at, at pretty high levels. I d I'm not sure if the, the elite skiers or the elite um, athletes have, uh, if it's, it's um, beneficial for, de for them for a health pers 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 perspective. Is there any evidence that this might lead on to further cardiac disease like Cardiomyopathy. Um, you could speculate that, but we cannot say it right now. And I don't I know any studies uh, who are saying that. But but there is a risk of cardiomyopathy, uh, tach tachycardia-induced myop uh, cardiomyopathy in uh, in people who has uh, atrial fibrillation. So would you, the next step, some families have cardiomyopathy in their families, would you recommend that they should do this exercise or would you advise them not to? Uh, if you have a family history of cardiomyopathy, you should be very carefully to, to um, do, do heart exercise training and, and uh, I think it's the normal um, advice to people with known cardiomyopathy, that they don't have, they are not allowed to to exercise at maximum levels, because there is a higher risk of having the the, the dangerous or lethal arrhythmias. Okay. 
like uh, ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. I think this was a very important question. So, but but what what do you recommend to your patient? You have an athlete, and this athlete develops, let's say, atrial fibrillation. So, is this a healthy person or not? What what, what are the diagnostic steps you would you you you, you would perform in in these patients? I hear very badly here. <laughs> what are the diagnostic steps you would perform in athletes who develop atrial fibrillation uh, with yeah. exercise? Okay. So are these yeah. healthy persons? This, mm. this goes in the same yeah. direction. Okay. I, I believe everyone who is um, uh, suffering from atrial fibrillation should at least undergo uh, an electrocardiogram and an ultrasound examination of uh, of the heart to to discover uh, eventually uh, cardiomyopathy. Would you disclose ischemia in these patients? Like to stress this <laughs> to a nuclear imaging? Ischemia, I, I believe that, that could be um, uh, we don't have it as a, a standard procedure to, to, to make an, uh, an, an exercise test, but of course if there are symptoms of ischemia you should do an exercise test. I think uh, in the interest of time we have to stop. Thank you very much.